let's talk for a few minutes about resources. I think we all know that resources very often can be scarce. And when resources are scarce or rare, people will often compete for them. We already know that people have sometimes fought wars over oil, for example. There's another resource, though, that is scarce in Southwest Asia. Let me show you some satellite imagery here. I want you to uh, pay attention uh, in particular to the colors that we see in this satellite image of Southwest Asia, also known as the Middle East. What colors do you see a lot of here? That's right, we see a lot of tans, browns, and grays because a large amount of Southwest Asia is in fact desert. And of course, by definition, a desert has very little what? Water. That's right. Deserts have very little water. So we know that one of the things that people need to survive is, well, food. So um, how do you think people are able to grow crops in a desert? This is what I'm going to ask you to do right now. I want you to close your eyes and imagine what a farm looks like. When you think about a farm, what vision do you get? What do you expect to see? Okay, I'm gonna show you what a farm looks like, a typical farm in Southwest Asia. So, is this what you're expecting? Yeah, probably not. You expect uh, farm fields to be a patchwork of squares and rectangles. These uh, farms look very different from that. Um, the fact of the matter is, when you're in a place where water is scarce, you have to use irrigation to grow your food. That means that water has to be pumped from fresh water sources, sometimes miles away, to irrigate your crops so that you can grow food. Now, the reason that these fields are round is because that's where the sprinklers grow, go in this particular their irrigation system. You'll notice the spaces in between the circles, nothing's growing there at all because there's no water there in the desert. But within the circles, that's where you see green. That's where you see crops able to grow. Uh, and by the way, this is what uh, one of those irrigation systems looks like. It's going to be a boom that hangs over the fields and then it will spin around. There's sprinklers hanging from these booms and then it will pivot over that central location that's in the middle of each of these circles. So that means that um, since having a source of fresh water to provide irrigation becomes very important. Therefore, communities are going to form in the areas where you have these water sources, places like rivers, near lakes, and near aquifers. Aquifers, by the way, that's groundwater, water that you get out of a well or, uh, or an oasis, as some uh, may look at it. So, safe to say that uh, the water from these rivers, lakes, and aquifers are crucial crucial to the survival of a country. Some wars have even been fought over water. So I want to uh, briefly tell you about a war called the Six Day War. This is actually one of the most famous uh, wars in history um, for a variety of reasons. Uh, part of it is because, yes, it was such a dramatic war, it was, uh, it was fought in just six days. Now, a little bit of the backstory here. Israel was fighting this war against three of their neighbors. So Israel was essentially outnumbered uh, fighting against Syria, Jordan, and Egypt all at once all at once. And if you look at the blue part of this map, the blue part of this map was Israel before the Six Day War. Territory that Israel controlled before the Six Day War. The pink areas are all the places that Israel seized from their enemies in, yes, just six days. Um, if you look at the top of the map, they seized the Golan Heights from Syria. Uh, you can then see that they seized the West Bank from Jordan, and they seized the Gaza Strip and the Sinai Peninsula from Egypt. And they did this in just six days, which begs the question, why did they stop here? If they had decided to fight, say, the two weeks war, they could have taken a lot more land, couldn't they? If they had decided to fight the one month war, they could have conquered huge areas. But they decided to stop here. They seized this territory in just six days and they were done. That's all they wanted. A little bit of a mystery until you actually look closely at what is in 
these areas. So there's three numbers that you're going to see uh, highlighted on the map here in particular. So um, if you notice, looking at this map, this place right here in the circle, this is the Jordan River, which is a major supply of, yes, fresh water in the region. So by capturing the West Bank, by capturing the West Bank, that allowed the Israelis to get access to the entire length of the Jordan River and therefore all the fresh water in the Jordan River. Ah, but there's more. By seizing the Golan Heights from Syria, this allowed Israel to completely encapsulate, to control a thing called the Sea of Galilee. Now it's called a sea, but it's actually a lake. The Sea of Galilee is the headwater. This is the source of fresh water going into the Jordan River. Now, not only do the Israelis do the Israelis have the ability to control this water to prevent other people from taking it, they also have the ability to take that fresh water away from one of their enemies, the Syrians. Now, not visible on the map, but I can tell you it is right here in location three. In location three, that is the location of the largest aquifer, the largest source of groundwater in the region. It's called the West Bank Aquifer. So by seizing these three areas, the Israelis were able to seize the future of fresh water for their people and, as a result, take that fresh water supply away from their enemies. So let's talk about the big picture here. Um, what we can see is that fresh water is a limited and valuable resource in Southwest Asia. And because these water sources, because the lakes and the rivers and the aquifers are not evenly distributed throughout the region, that means that some countries have a lot of access to fresh water. Well, like Israel right now, and other countries do not. And that may, makes for some pretty serious economic and social consequences for the people living in Southwest Asia.